Hello all of a person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new discovery coming out of a very very famous planetary nebula known as M Nebula. And it's something that, as you see in the title, involves lasers. That's right, natural lasers. Let's talk about this, let's visit the nebula and welcome to What The Math. So Ant Nebula is actually probably the most famous nebula out there and it's called Ant Nebula for its shape. I'm going to show it to you in a second, we're going to go there right here in uh, Space Engine, I'm going to jump to it, and there it is. As you can see, it kind of sort of resembles an ant, I guess, sort of. Mostly because it has two unusual blobs um, of what seems to be dust cloud. Now, planetary nebulas are usually formed when uh, a star similar to our sun basically becomes a white dwarf and kind of expels a lot of the material and essentially releases it into um, into the abyss, into the outer space. And this is exactly what happened here, probably a few thousand years ago. Now, somewhere in the middle of all of this, right there, right at the center here somewhere, is a very interesting star, a white dwarf, that produces quite a lot of ultraviolet radiation. This ultraviolet radiation is responsible for basically irradiating this whole cloud and making it so luminous and so beautiful. Interestingly though, we've discovered something very unusual here, something that we didn't really expect to find. This is actually a study uh, published, or I guess led by Isabel Elman from University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, and uh, it's technically a discovery by an, a European space agency, ESA. And basically they discovered something that was actually theoretically speculated something like 100 years ago. Back then, a person by the name of Donald Menzel actually proposed an existence of these natural um, features of certain clouds and he referred to them as light amplification by the stimulated emissions of radiation. This is actually something that we currently have today and it's an acronym, LASER. They, he actually referred to natural lasers. This is before we even made artificial lasers. And he basically said that somewhere out there are going to be these unusual features that will be expelling a lot of uh, very powerful radiation. Now, this nebula was actually named after him. It's called Menzel 3, but it's also known as Ant Nebula. And what's really interesting about this is that he predicted all of this and we just recently discovered that he was kind of right. Now, I'm going to show you what is probably causing those lasers. But first, let's actually discuss what is actually the difference between a laser and normal light. Well, the idea is actually pretty simple. Normal light, which is here on the left, normally involves uh, different wavelengths. It's also multidirectional, meaning that it goes all, all over the place. And in some sense, it's incoherent, which means that all of the light um, is kind of random in its wavelength and also its phases of wavelength. A laser, on the other hand, has these three very specific features. First of all, it's monochromatic, meaning that it's usually one color. So like blue, for example, or certain type of red. It's also directional, so it goes into sort of exactly the same direction and almost doesn't spread at all. The spread for a laser is very, very, very little, which allows us to basically focus the light so well using lasers. And lastly, it's coherent, and that means that the actual phases of light are all the same. The wavelength actually, the pixel wavelengths actually um, match. And this means that you can create these very, very powerful rays of light that go into the same direction and produce a tremendous amount of energy, even over far distances. And a typical uh, natural laser basically has the same features, but it's obviously formed very, very different from how we form them in the lab. I'm going to basically try to recreate what's going on here using Universe Sandbox just to kind of demonstrate to you what's going on inside. So first of all, we know that there, are, there is this very, very beautiful planetary nebula. Somewhere in the middle is a white dwarf. We don't have a name for it, so we're just going to call it Ant Nebula Star. We also know that uh, normally these are alone or sometimes they have a partner, but in this case, there's almost certainly a partner. And this partner is probably really, really small and not really that significant. So it's maybe something like a red dwarf or something. Let's just place something really little around it. Um, something even smaller than that, orbiting around this star at a distance. Now, we don't really see either one of them, but what we see are the effects of their interaction. Because the star is orbiting around the much more massive white dwarf, it's actually causing a lot of the gas that would have escaped otherwise to basically form a ring around 
the white dwarf and it's basically creating something that might look like this i'm gonna try to create uh, sort of a torus around this and there you go now okay this is a little bit too fast let's decelerate time here uh now this ring is orbiting around the uh, white dwarf and it's basically made up of things like hydrogen and just molecules that used to be part of the star and kind of came back because of the uh, other star, which is somewhere here, kicking them back into this orbit. In other words, it didn't let them leave the system. And as they orbit around the Ant Nebula star, the radiation, the ultraviolet radiation from the star strikes these molecules and actually excites them to the point where they get into what's known as an excited state. And this state is very easy to trigger using even uh, visual light or any kind of light, but normally infrared light. And when another type of light strikes them, they release laser light. They basically start emitting um, ampl amplified light that we call lasers. And so essentially, all around this ring, there are lasers emitted um, pretty much in every direction. It's kind of like a laser show, but we're just so lucky that we're sort of pointing this way. So we're seeing the side of this whole event. So we're getting a lot of those lasers received uh, right here on Earth. Now, this is not the first laser we discovered in space. As a matter of fact, I'll talk about the next laser in, in the video that's coming out very, very soon. But this is one of the most exciting because it was theoretically predicted and we have now discovered it as uh, Mendel predicted 100 years ago. So in some sense, this is actually very, very exciting. In other sense, this also allows us to understand how lasers actually form naturally out there in space, but also allows us to potentially use these for some future um, studies involving direction and distance measurements and we can potentially even use these to track things in space similarly to how we use pulsars. So these lasers, because they will most likely emit at the same frequency from the same sort of direction, are very, very useful to us. But other than that, that's actually all we've learned about Ant Nebula so far. And this is all we know about it. So for now, that we're going to stop here. And in one of the future videos, you're going to find out about some of the other natural lasers we've discovered over the last few years. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye bye.